Hello, everyone. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. It's my first time in Israel, too. So I'm from Arasal Tax. We're a newly established company in Cyprus, and we are trying to solve all your internationalization problems. So why we are here? We've seen many brilliant presentations today. I'm sure we'll see many more. And there's many ideas on how companies can expand internationally. Being an IT sort of background in here means that your businesses will most likely be expanding through the internet. Now, the success or failure of your business often depends on your initial setup of the business. If you get it wrong from the beginning, sometimes this will be a deterrent to growth in the future. Also, many times, people who want to buy out your firm will look at the structure and then decide if that structure is worth investing in without even looking at what the business, what you are selling is. Now, that is crucial because the structure can decide your fate. Now, we are here to offer IP structuring. We offer a lot more, but being Israel, being a startup nation, we thought we'd focus on IP structuring to show you the capabilities of our cell and what we can do. Anything we apply here can work to affiliate marketing and any sort of businesses working digitally because they sell internationally. So, on IPs. First of all, it came to my understanding that many of you do not know what your IP, which is kind of a problem because our presentation is called How to Benefit from Your IP. An IP is intellectual property. So that means anything which you can patent. And it used to be very easy to benefit from patents because you just set, put them in a certain country which was a tax haven usually, license out to other countries either in big markets like America, Europe, Russia, and so on, and then cash in, transfer your money to that tax haven. However, the whole world, especially after the 2008 financial crisis, has caught on to this. So the OECD, if anyone's heard of that, has come out and released measures to tackle abusive structures. So what we're here to do is show you, you should know how to patent. That's the first thing of the business. Cash in, that's easy. I'm pretty sure all of you know what to do with your cash. We're here to help you with structuring your business. So what's happening in the world, in the global tax landscape? So anyone heard of the OECD? That's the organization which governs international trade. So the OECD has taken a look at the global tax climate after the 2008 financial crisis and has decided that this is not right. There's a lot of things, there's a lot of loopholes, there's a lot of ways where people can transfer money to other countries without paying the taxes that they should. This led to an outcry and in an era of depression, measures needed to be taken. So one of the most effective measures that they took was the so-called nexus approach. We'll come on to it later, but there's other things such as beneficial ownership provisions, MLI, tax haven blacklist. So basically, if in your structure you have a company in BVI or Seychelles, when time comes to get bought, chances are this will be a deterrent. So something not part of my presentation, I just noticed on the way here this morning, is that get taxi is very big here in Israel. That company was actually something that I was handling in Cyprus because they were based in Cyprus. Now, when we say based, we don't mean their employees, we mean the top holding company. This company was gonna be sold off to investors. So as you guys had an idea, you developed it, and it came time to cash in. However, the biggest problem that Get was facing when they wanted to sell was their structure. They had dubious structures, they had companies which didn't really offer anything, they had no economic substance, and that was something that the investors who, I cannot mention the name, but they were statutory, big listed investors wanted to stray away from. There's other many other things going on, such as the new exchange of information, FATCA, CRS, which means you cannot hide money anymore. It's becoming much more difficult. Sorry, okay. So, this is a big killer. This is a so-called nexus fraction. Now, it's a very small formula, so it's not really too complicated to understand. But the effect of this formula is that, so imagine how things used to work. You used to come up with your business idea, whatever it was, then you used to patent it, some legally protect it internationally, and then you used to move on to transfer this IP to a country where you felt comfortable in putting this IP. However, 
What the Nexus fraction does is, first of all, it states what can constitute an IP. So before you can pretty much call anything an IP. There's a famous case about Starbucks, which was paying zero tax in the UK because they were paying a lot of money out for licensing in terms of their logo. So the OECD came in and said, okay, anything on that list on that side doesn't count as an IP anymore. So they're only focusing on things on this side, which most important to you guys is computer software. So computer software, you can legally protect it, it can be yours, and you can benefit from it internationally. However, what happens with the Nexus fraction is that you have to align the tax benefits to where your IP was developed. So example, you come up with a brilliant idea in Israel. It's going to make you millions. You're sure of this. You're going to be one of the richest men in the world. However, you don't want to register that in Israel. You want to trade in other countries as well. You want to find a good country to put your base in which will benefit from tax. What you do in this case is you establish a holding company. However, the Nexus approach comes and tells you you are not allowed to benefit in a country simply by transferring your IP to this country. Legally, it's protected, but you just will not get the tax benefit. So, what will you be looking for? You need to find a country with a robust tax and legal system. You need to, a country where most likely you will want to move to that country maybe once your company grows and you want to have a sound personal tax system. There needs to be an absence of high regulation and you generally want to be in a place which is good for business, which is inviting for business. Also, close to Israel, that, that's another aspect. If you are from Israel and you want to be close by, we are from Cyprus, which is just, I experienced it myself today, less than one hour to get. So the traffic jams may be easier to come in from Israel. So the Cyprus tax system in general, I'll be very brief about this because as international tax planners, we can assist you with setting up companies anywhere, anywhere in the world. It can be in some Caribbean island, it can be in any European country, anything a client wants, we can assist with setting up. So. Cyprus has been through a recession recently. However, what you don't know is that we've come out of this much stronger than when we went in. We have a booming real estate sector and one of the fastest growing economies in the EU now, despite having a banking crisis not too long ago. And most importantly to the people of Israel as well, is that we have found natural gas between Israel and Cyprus. I'm sure many of you know of the Leviathan fields. We are as Cyprus and Israel, we're hoping to benefit from this soon. But that's not why we're here. So, an overview of the Cyprus tax system. There's many, many, many benefits to the Cyprus tax system because you are talking about a jurisdiction which is committed to staying as favorable to investment as possible whilst, and this is crucial, being fully OECD and EU compliant. That means that if you set up your structure using Cyprus, you will not be blacklisted. So what would happen before is, if a regulator or anyone, let's say in the States or in a big country in Europe, were to see a structure and see, let's say, dividend payments going out into a BVI company, into a Seychelles company, then they would automatically see a red flag there. Something's going wrong. Someone is shifting money that they shouldn't. So Cyprus's tax system, being fully compliant, is also the most favorable. Our corporate tax rate is only 12.5%, but there are many, many, many exemptions to that which can reduce it much more. There is no withholding tax on any outbound payments or dividend of interest, and we have many exemptions, such as dividend income. So if you set your company in Cyprus and you receive dividend from sales abroad, those will not be taxed at all in Cyprus. So for example, this works well with affiliates. Affiliates are another big client group which we are seeing moving into Cyprus because they sell internationally. They don't have a fixed place where they need to be. They don't need to be close to their big markets because their markets are the internet. Therefore, these type of companies are ripe and perfect candidates for optimizing global tax strategies. So, I'm going to, to talk to you one of the most important things in the Cyprus tax legislation, which I believe will be exported into many other 
jurisdictions, and that is the notional interest deduction. Might get a bit technical, but we'll see where it all comes out to. So a notional interest deduction basically means that in order to promote the use of capital instead of loans into Cyprus companies, because that's becoming a problem globally, the Cyprus tax authorities decided to invent a new system called notional interest deduction, which they borrowed from other jurisdictions, but the gist of it is that instead of giving loans to your Cyprus company, which are considered to be abusive and erosive, you instead inject capital into this company. Any capital you invest into a Cyprus company can then be deducted to give you the same tax benefits as you would have had if you used IP box regimes. Any of you who are aware with IP box regimes, they can be very beneficial. However, it's becoming increasingly difficult to use these. So the IP box regime basically gives you as if that were a loan. So it takes your equity and consider, considers it to be a loan and gives you a deduction of up to 80% of taxable income. So, in addition to being a good place for your business, you might want to relocate to Israel yourself because taxes wherever you are based are too high. So, as I said, the flight is less than an hour. I have clients in Cyprus who spend the week during where they work in Cyprus and fly over here for the weekend, spend three days. Because the majority of the time they're in Cyprus, they're Cyprus tax residents, and they can benefit from the Cyprus tax system. We have a progressive tax system, which goes up to 35% for over 60,000. However, and look at this, you can get a 50% exemption from your taxable income if you earn over 100,000. That's 50%, and that's top tier, so that means the effectiveness of it is much higher than just 35%. If you earn lower than that, you can get a 20% deduction. In addition, and this is very important, this is a killer, we have something called the non-domiciled provision. Some of you might know it from the UK, which is soon to abolish it, making Cyprus a prime destination. Non-dom basically means that you might be a tax resident based on the laws of Cyprus, but we as a country recognize that you have your base somewhere else. You are an Israeli. This is where your base is. You're not domiciled to Cyprus. In such a case, we will give you very strong benefits. Any dividend or interest income you receive whilst being a Cyprus tax resident and non-DOM, is completely exempt from taxation in Cyprus. Nothing. You pay zero. This is very strong. Imagine people receiving hundreds and hundreds of millions of euros as dividends. If you receive them while you're Cyprus tax resident, then you pay 0% tax on this. One strategy that many of our clients do, let's say you're an affiliate, and you are setting up your structure, and you have a cash cow somewhere where all your money goes but you don't need that money right now. There's no use for it. You don't have to spend it or anything. So why receive that money now and be taxed on it? And dividends is usually very highly taxed in most countries. So what you do is you keep that money in your company for five, 10 years, however long it takes. When you need that money to come out of the company, you can become a Cyprus tax resident in that year, receive 200 million within that year, and pay 0% tax on this money. Now you have to check with your home state because there might be anti-abuse regulations. However, this is possible and we've seen it happen with many, many, many clients. So how would you become a Cyprus tax resident should you wish? This is a traditional way which most countries have by spending 183 days in a year. However, most of you, as I've seen, travel the world all the time you're switching from country to country. Sometimes you don't spend 183 days in any country in the world, let alone spending in Cyprus where you only have a base. So we have another new system called the 60-day rule, where by spending as little as 60 days physically present in Cyprus within a tax year, you can become a Cyprus tax resident and benefit from all the provisions we've just seen. Now, there's some other conditions. You need to not be tax resident in any other country. You need to not spend 183 days in another country. You need to have an office or employment in Cyprus, and you need to have a rented or owned property in Cyprus. But if the money is substantial, then this should not be a problem for anyone. So, now, we've seen the benefits, but how precisely will this work for you and your IP? Now, remember, IP is intellectual property. So. This is someone here who's had a brilliant idea, the best idea he's come up with. This will make him billions. He's gonna be the richest guy on earth soon. 
However, there's a lot of steps he needs to follow before that happens. First thing he does is he gets his idea legally protected. There are many lawyers we can help you with, but most likely you will have your own. I've met some in the corridors today who offer such services. You can offer legal protection in several countries' jurisdictions so that that patent is yours and no one can dispute that. That's the hardest part. Once you get that done, you get your IP and you inject it. Once it's valued and you know how much it's worth, you inject it as capital into your Cypress company. Then your Cypress company licenses out to operating companies in each of the jurisdictions that you're in. Once these, once these rights go out, the Cypress company is entitled to receive royalties. These royalties coming into Cyprus will be withheld tax based on the relevant double tax treaty agreement. If you're in the EU, most likely there will be no withholding because of EU regulations, so that's highly beneficial. And once they reach Cyprus, there will be no further taxation in Cyprus. Furthermore, these companies will also distribute dividends to Cyprus. Any dividends received by the Cyprus company will be exempt from any taxation in Cyprus. Some conditions apply, but chances are you'll meet them. So. Once this structure is set up, the money can stay in the Cyprus company without ever reaching the UBO until he becomes a Cyprus tax resident, as we have shown before. Now, you might think that this presentation has been focused on Cyprus. We had to bring it down to a focus. We can offer you services for any country you go to. We can assist in establishing companies, in organizing your structure, in the administration, everything that's required from a business perspective. Now, VAT considerations. Once you start selling, you're not only going to be looking at direct taxation, but you'll also be looking at VAT. Now, as a full member of the European Union, Cyprus is party to all EU legislation and treaties. So what that means is we have what's called the mini one-stop shop. Before, if you started making sales, especially in the infancy of a company, and you were selling over the internet, and you had a thousand euros of sale in each country in the European Union, you needed to establish yourself in each of these countries. Now, imagine a business person such as yourself having such a company with only a thousand euros of sale in each of these jurisdictions, having to go through the admin of setting up and submitting returns in each of these jurisdictions. What the mini one-stop shop offers is that you can establish yourself in a particular EU state, call it Cyprus, call it Malta, call it Netherlands, wherever it is, and once you set up that base, you can do single filing in your home state, which will cover all EU sales. Once you start growing, then you'll start wanting to also establish in each jurisdiction, but it really helps companies in the infancy of their going global. So, a threshold is 10,000 euros, so once you start selling 10,000 to each jurisdiction, then you're going to start needing to comply with other admin stuff, but for the beginning of your expansion, this is very beneficial. So, basically, there are some conditions you need to look into. It's primarily focused on digital services, which covers all internet companies, affiliate marketing, and so on and we can assist you with establishing this structure within the European Union. So, in closing, why are we here and what can we do? Many of these companies that go and try to internationalize themselves, offshoreize their company, these are all terms which are used, they find themselves struggling to figure out what the best way to do it is. Going to a big four firm is highly expensive. And if you're a company in the very infancy working out of a shed somewhere or someone's basement, you can imagine that it's very difficult for you to get this. Also, you have tons of regulations, know your client procedures that you need to go through, and you have someone who is a purely white collar professional who cannot see eye to eye with you, expects you to have an understanding of business. What we do here at Arasal, which is a newly established company, is focus on our clients. We will be by your side to establish, give you advice wherever you need to go in the world on how to establish and how to benefit from your structure. Sorry, so I have 40 seconds left, so does anyone have any questions? Yes, please. Okay, so one of the biggest problems that I've faced um, with setting up 
offshore companies, Seychelles, Malta, BVI, whatever, was uh, getting a merchant account approved for those countries. Um, do you have connections or contacts and introductions, or how do you solve that problem? So, yes, this is one of the biggest problems that companies are having, banking. You can set up a company, but opening a bank account isn't that different. I've actually met people here today who can offer solutions with this. We can offer you recommendation services with banks. We can offer you something more important, how to optimize and design your strategy so that you don't face problems with the banks. This is by strengthening the substance of that company and ensuring that you have a genuine business with a full trail to your ultimate beneficial owner that the bank can accept and know that it's true. So to answer your question, we do deal with banking, we do offer such services, and there's people in here who offer alternative solutions which we are hoping to partner with and offer this to our clients. Anyone else? Thank you.